Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing almost all the problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that you have trouble with, and if you wish to watch the solution to the to the problem, you will find the solutions to almost all the problems in this book from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book happens to contain almost exactly the same problems, and in most cases, appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find all the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. From day 1 through 250, original solutions tend to be lengthier, original solutions tend to be a little bit more in depth. Right now, we are in the process of solving quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are very important, they are a big chunk of the exam still, they have not gone away. Unfortunately, the newer books do not provide us with sufficient quantitative comparison questions to practice on. For that reason, from day number 401, this is our 50th day, from day number 401, we began solving quantitative comparison questions out of this book here. As I said, this is our 50th video from this book dealing with quantitative comparison. Right now, we are on page number 302. Let's turn to it, page 302, problem number 15, the very last problem on the page, the very last problem on the page, number 15. Number 15, when it appeared in the exam, only the fifth of the people who took the exam got this question right. Four-fifth of the people, 80% of the people missed it. Here's what we are told. We are told that x is an integer, x is an integer greater than 1. So x has to be a whole number, it has to be an integer, it has to be a whole number, it has to be greater than 1. Here is our column A. We are being asked to compare 3 raised to x plus 1 versus column B, which is 4 raised to x. 4 raised to x. I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to get out of your way. I'm going to give you an unobstructed view. I want you to solve the problem yourself. Once you have done the problem yourself, then resume the video and then compare your work against the work that we are about to do together in a few seconds. You must always do that with every single problem. Listen, before I get out of your video, before I get out of your uh, uh, way to, to, let you get, to let you have the unobstructed view of the blackboard, I just want to point out one quick thing because otherwise I will completely forget it. It comes to my mind right now. Yesterday we did problem number 14. Problem number 14 we described as the penultimate problem. Penultimate problem. Penultimate is a very fancy way of saying second to the last problem. We did. We have learned this word penultimate in our vocabulary lessons. I am 100% sure of that. I believe it was day number. Yes, it is 11. Vocabulary. Day 11. Vocabulary day number 11. In the event that you are interested in improving your vocabulary to get a decent score in the reading portion of the exam, it is important that you work on the vocabulary. Just type in GRE vocabulary words, GRE vocabulary words, day 11, and you will watch this video where you will learn the word penultimate along with some other useful good words for the GRE. You understand? I'm going to, I'm going to give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video and do the problem yourself. Okay, so here we go. 3 raised to x plus 1. 3 raised to x plus 1 versus 4 raised to x. And given the fact that x has to be a whole number more than 1. Since x needs to be a whole number more than 1, the simplest, quickest, most economical way, most logical way, is to simply start plugging in numbers and see what happens. x has to be more than 1, let's pretend that x is 2. Let's, let's pretend that x is equal to 2. If x is equal to 2, here we will find 3 raised to, 3 raised to 2 plus 1, which is same as 3 raised to 3, which is same as 27. 
and here you will find 4 is to remember x is equal to 2 4 is to 2 which is 16 16 of course 16 of course is less than 27 the answer in this scenario is a answer in this scenario is a notice how we phrase this sentence we are not claiming that the answer is a we are not claiming that the answer is a what we are saying is that the answer in this scenario is a Let's try one more time just to make sure that the answer does not change because remember whatever answer that we pick here A, B or C, whatever answer that we pick here what we are claiming is that the debt quantity is always, always, always greater. So if we finish, if we stop right here and we said that the answer is A, the claim that we, we, we would have been making is that the quantity in column A is always greater. But we do not know that if it is always greater. Let's try it one more time. Let's try, let's try x equal to 3. Let's try x equal to 3. If x is equal to 3, we can end up with 3 raised to x plus 1, which is 3 plus 1, which is same as x raised to 4, and or rather, which is same as 3 raised to 4, and 3 raised to 4 is simply going to be 27 times 3, because 27 is 3 raised to 3. 27 is 3 raised to 3, therefore 20 raised, 3 raised to 4 is going to be 27 times 3, which is equal to 7 3s are 21, 32, and of course it's 81. So it's that's 81. Let's see what we get here. Here we'll find 4, 4 is to, 4 is, remember x is equal to 3, 4 is to 3, 4 is to 3 is going to be same as, 4 is to 3 is going to be same as 4 is to 2 times 4, 4 is to 2, 4 is to 2 which is 16 times 4 which is 64, again 64, again 64 happens to be less than 81. The answer again is A. Answer again is A. Now at, is, at this point it is a call that you have to make. It's a call only you and you only can make it in the exam. The call that you have to make is that do you try one more time just to make sure that it does not change or do you take a chance. I personally would like to try one more time. I would like to try at least one more time just to make sure. Okay? Let's try one more time. Let's pretend x is equal to 4. Let's pretend x is equal to 4. If x is equal to 4, what we get here is 3 raised to 4 plus 1, which is same as 3 raised to 5. And 3 raised to 5 is going to be same as 3 raised to 4, which is 81 times 3. 81 times 3. Let's find out what 81 times 3 is. 1 3 is a 3. And 8 3 is a 24. So we end up with 243. We end up with... 243. Let's see what we get here. Remember, x is equal to 4. Remember, x is equal to 4. So here we end up with 4 is to 4. 4 is to 4 is going to be same as 4 is to 3, which is 64 times 4. 64 times 4, which is equal to 4 4 is a 16, 6 carry 1, 6 4 is a 24, 6 4 is a 24 plus 1 is 25. 256, voila, 256, 256 is in fact greater than 243, 256 is greater than 243, in the first two scenarios the answer was A, in this scenario the answer turns out to be B, because of the fact that we have conflicting answer now, the correct answer is D. The only reason, the only reason why this percentile is so low, it's only 20%, is not because this problem is particularly difficult, is because people tend to be lazy. They stop after the two tries. But it's a call, as I said, you have to make. Sometimes I stop too after two tries, depending on how you feel, depending on your mood, and depending on how much time you have, and depending, depending on how confident you feel in your work. Do you understand? Try, try one more time. If the time allows, try one more time. If you feel like it, try one more time. If you're not tired, if you're not frustrated, it's always a good idea to cover, to cover uh, your derriere. Do you understand? To be technical, to use a technical term. It is always an excellent idea to make sure that one's third year is covered. Don't leave it exposed. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.